staff from our L.A. Bureau is a man who has spent plenty of time in Afghanistan. Robert Young Pelton is the author of The World's <clears throat> Most Dangerous Places and The Adventurist, My Life in Dangerous Places, which I read a great book. Welcome back to our show. Good morning. Well, you've spent some time in Afghanistan. A lot of people are, are uh, who perhaps have not been studying it as long uh, look at the Northern Alliance moving in and think, aha, progress. And you are right there to say, wait a second, these guys aren't quite what, you, what you're expecting. Tell us about them. Well, technically, there's no such thing as Northern Alliance. It's called the United Front. The Northern Alliance is basically a group of uh, warlords who gathered together to fight the Taliban. Uh, most of the uh, things you're seeing now are basically localized commanders that are taking over cities that have been abandoned by the Taliban. But don't forget that uh, the Northern Alliance's stated enemy was Pakistan, and the United Front has also said that Pakistan was behind much of the Taliban. So there's a lot of uh, backtracking and politicizing to do. And Robert, put, how surprised are you that there's this celebration? Because when I was reading most of your book, you've been on before, you talked about the Taliban and Northern Alliance being equally, uh, in, in many cases, uh, repugnant. But yet these people seem just uh, enamored with the, that the Northern Alliance are in the city of Kabul. Well, just about any, any type of uh, person is going to be better than the Taliban regime. They, they were very brutal in Kabul. Obviously, they have a little bit more support in the south, but even Kandahar is going to fall in the next couple of days. So the Taliban has spent its time, but now it's up to the Northern Alliance to figure out how to work with the outside world and also the local people to set up administrations. Well, the Northern Alliance, uh, Robert, says on the radio today that apparently they have taken over control of the government, such as it is in Afghanistan, on a temporary basis basis and they say as well that uh, they're going to support the United Nations in any effort uh, to bring in a new government that is reflective of the many ethnicities of Afghanistan. Do you buy well, that? First, well first of all the Northern Alliance is the official government of Afghanistan. Um, they always have been. The, the problem is that there are divisions within the Northern Alliance now between Dostum and Khan and uh, Rabani in the north. They have to work those out and then they also have to work with the Pakistanis and also with the Americans to figure out how they're going to rule the country. By the way, I don't find the Northern Alliance repugnant by any means. I just, they're under a lot of pressure. They don't have a lot of resources and they're faced with the same problems that were there when the Taliban was running. There, there's still hunger, there's still poverty and much destruction. Uh, but Robert, you also know that there was uh, much the same scene when, when the Northern Alliance or United Front, whichever we want to call them, was controlling the towns. The Taliban came in and in part was so successful because of the same behavior that the Northern Alliance has just now pushed out the, the, from the Taliban. Well, you're exactly right, Edie. What happened is that they put together an alliance of people who hated each other, basically. That, that's all that really ties them together, is that they all had a mutual hatred of bin Laden and, uh, and wanted to kick him out. Right. Well, that's the history of Afghanistan, unfortunately, is that they're usually united by a common enemy. Right. And they're usually divisive once they have peace. So let's, let's hope that they can get this together. Robert, do you expect the Taliban to have a return thrust? Well, keep in mind when the Russians rolled in, they, they cut through that country pretty quickly. The Taliban is actually more comfortable fighting a guerrilla war from the outside. Uh, you know, their supply lines have been cut off. They were extended well too far past their normal capabilities. What you're going to see is, is a long-term war of uh, attacks and sabotage and uh, just mayhem, just as they fought in the 80s. Well, uh, we're almost out of time, but speaking of mayhem, uh, that, that country right now is in complete chaos. So why are you going over there? Because I think this is the, the, the rules for the next millennium. We have to look at how countries that have been so destroyed can be rebuilt with outside help. And I think there's a lot of hope and promise. But we have to understand that country more fully to do it. And you're going to be traveling there on November the 20th. Our best to you. Also, uh, World's Most Dangerous Places TV show will take place in Afghanistan, November the 17th, 4 o'clock Eastern Time on the Travel Channel. Robert, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Okay. I like that, that website, comebackalive.com. Wow. Man, <laughs>